At video 21, let's get our spinner and our alert feedback working for the login modal and the login page. When we log in, we don't get any more feedback and also we don't get the spinner in the center of the screen. Like for example, if you go to the shopping page, you see the spinner, we'll get that working. And also when we make a change like the alert system, we'll get that working as well for our login page and the login modal. Let's review the services that we are currently using to turn our spinner on and also give us back the alert messages. And if I re-comment this back in, and how we turn the spinner on is we use this show method. So we call the spinner, and this is the service that we're bringing into the constructor right here, and it's called ngx spinner service. And this is pretty straightforward to turn the spinner on. You use the show method. To turn the spinner off, you use the hide method right here. So whenever the user is done logging in, if they succeed or fail, we turn off the spinner. Also, the alert service we're bringing in to the constructor, and it's called alert Ser service. This is pretty straightforward as well. When you call the info box, it gives you like a blue box, and then you pass in whatever your message is, and then you get a blue box on the right side. Here is the success. You get a green box, and here is whatever the message is. And then also there's a couple more methods like the danger that's red and then there's a warning method that's like a yellow box you get on the right side as well. And also we're going to create a effect for this right here, rerouting the user to the products page. So when the user is successful at logging in, we'll reroute them to the shopping page. Where are we going to create all these new effects? We're going to create all these effects within our global store. And the reason is if you think about it, the sp spinner pertains to the application. It doesn't pertain to just this auth effect file. So we're going to create its own file and this is going to be a global file that our entire application uses. And that's going to pertain to our alert service, also the rerouting the user. So whenever we want to reroute the user to the products page, the home page or anything like that, we're going to go to this individual route effect file and tell that file about it. So let's generate three brand new effect files and we'll put that in our global effect folder. Let's open up the command line and then inside the terminal I'm going to paste a snippet that I already have. So we're going to create a brand new effect file. We're going to put it in our global store and I'm going to call the file spinner. So whenever we want to turn the spinner on and off for any action we'll tell this file about it. We'll configure this new effect file to our main app module. Is the root yes? So in other words we're going to use the for root not the for feature. Uh, API true, skip test true. Hit enter. And yes, I'll use the create function. And we want to generate two more files. One is going to be for our alert system. And I'll just call it alert just to keep it short and simple. So alert, hit enter again. Yes, again. And we want to create one more, and this one's going to be for our whenever we want to reroute the user, and I'll call it route. And hit enter again. Yes, again. So we just generated three effect files. Let's check out our effect files. And also, let's make sure it updated our app module as well. And we go down into the effects folder and open up the alert effects. And I'll select the right side here. I want all my effects on the right side. So I'll select the alert effects file we just created, the route effects file, and the spinner. And if we review that, and we get just our basic boilerplate like we did with our off effect, and that's for all three. So we're all set to go. And I'm gonna leave it on the spinner. And then let's also check out our app module, make sure that was configured correctly. As you can see, it was changed. Open that up. I'll close this down so we've got some room. And as you can see here, it was added in within our effect module, all three effects. That looks great. We could close that down now. So where are we going to start? We'll start on the spinner and we'll create our effects for that. How we're going to turn the spinner on and off is by listening to actions. Like for example, when the user logs in, we can listen to the login page action and turn the spinner on. And then if the user successfully logs in or fails at logging in, we can listen to those actions and turn the spinner off. And the spinner is this, by the way, the, the center spinner, and that's what we're working on. Let's set that up. Inside of the spinner effect file, the first thing we'll want to do is bring in our service like we did inside of our auth effect. 
and we'll bring in the spinner service and I'll bring that in. And now we have access to that service and then we wanna bring in our actions that we're listening for. And whenever we want access to our auth actions, we'll just call on this. Now we're ready to create our effects. So the first effect I'm gonna create is for turning the spinner on. I'll add that at the top. And I called this effect spinner on. And you might notice a little difference here. Like in this case, we're not dispatching any actions or we're not even returning any actions. So whenever you're not dispatching any actions, you want to use this dispatch false. You wanna add that towards the end. Very important. And also let's bring in our up type from NGRX. Then here we're using the tap operator. This is from RxJS, we'll bring that in. So we're listening to this one action. Whenever this action gets dispatched, you'll see the spinner turn on. And also I wanna add in one more action and this is for our modal. So I'll call the from auth actions and inside there, there should be the login modal. So if any of these actions get dispatched, you'll see the spinner turn on. Now we want to make sure we turn the spinner off whenever the user's done doing whatever they're doing, in this case, logging in. So I'll create another effect and I'll call this one spinner off. And this one's very similar to the first one. And this one turns the spinner off whenever these two actions get dispatched, the login success or the login failure. And normally you don't want to set this set timeout. I'm only adding this so we can actually see it. But if you're dealing with real APIs in production, you probably would want to remove this right here. You wouldn't need that. You would just want to have this in here. And as time goes on, we're going to be adding more and more actions to this spinner on and the spinner off. Let's save this and we'll recomment this part out again. So it's not turning the spinner on from over here. And we'll save this as well. And now we're ready for testing. Now when we click the login button, that should dispatch our action and our spinner should turn on. And then when we successfully log in or we fail at logging in, uh, those actions should dispatch and it should turn the spinner off. So if I hit login, our spinner turns on. And then when we successfully logged in, it turned the spinner off. Then I'll also let's trigger a failure just to be safe and our spinner turned off again, that's great. Let's test out our login modal. So we have a action called login modal and we're listening to that action. So whenever that action gets dispatched, that should turn the spinner on as well. And that's working great. Now we're ready to work on the alerts. And if we go to the shopping page and I click on the cart, we wanna get this working on the right side and we'll set that up next. Like we did inside the spinner effect file, we'll add in our service within the constructor. And this is gonna be our alert service. And I'll bring that in from ngx alerts. And also we'll want to import our actions that we'll be listening for. Whenever we want access to our auth actions, we'll call on this. Now that we set up everything, now we're ready to start creating our effects. The first effect we'll wanna create is for this right here. Whenever the user is trying to log in, we'll give them back this message. Let's create this effect. I call this effect checking your information and we'll pull in the up type operator from NGRX effects and also the tap operator from RxJS. And the two actions that we're listening for is the login page action and the login modal. If any of those actions get dispatched, we'll give back the user this alert. Also, we're not dispatching any actions from this effect, so I'm using the dispatch false as well. Now we're ready to create our second effect, and the second effect is for when the user is successful at logging in. I'll add that right below here. This one I called welcome back, and this one is slight different than the first effect we created. Here we're passing in the payload that we're getting from our login success, and here we're passing it in in the function and we're getting access to our username and we're passing that with the string here. That's our success effect. Let's create our failure effect. And this one's called unable to log in. And we're listening to the login failure action. Whenever that gets dispatched, we'll give the user back this alert message. And now we just created all our effects. Let's save this and test this out before we set up our route effects. We'll start on the login page. Now this should test our first effect and our second effect. And if we click login, 
and our first effect is working and our second effect is working the login success that's good and then let's trigger a error by putting in a bogus username and our third effect is working great let's make sure our login modal is working correctly i'll enter in a valid username and a bogus password and it's working correctly here and then a bogus username and that should trigger an error and that's working fine as well so our side effect for our alerts is working great now we want to reroute the user to the shopping page when they successfully log in we'll set that up inside the route effects file we'll bring in our service inside the constructor like we did in the alert and the spinner effects file in this case we'll bring in the router from angular router and also we'll need to bring in our action so let's import them and in this case we're only going to need to create one effect and that's going to be for this right here when the user successfully logs in we'll reroute them to the products shopping page let's create that effect I called this effect go shopping and we'll need to bring in the of type and also the tap operator from rxjs and when the login success action gets dispatched we'll reroute them to the products shopping page and that's all we'll need to set up in our routes effect file for now let's save that and test it make sure it's working now whenever we successfully log in we should be rerouted to the shopping page. Let's try our modal first. And we get rerouted to the shopping page. That's good. Let's test out our login page now. So I'll enter in a valid user and log in again. And we are rerouted to the shopping. Now in the next video, we'll need to set up one more side effect. And that's going to be for the login modal. As you notice, when we log in, and when we successfully log in, the modal stays open. Well, we could close this modal by using another side effect. And also, we'll clean up our login component and our login modal component and remove a lot of that dead code. And we'll do that in the next video.